Hey guys, this is Hell Hades, and this is another Raid Shadow Legends video. So today I'm going to do a guide on Steel Skull, one of the probably more famous epics in the game. Uh, he's currently sitting in my vault. Get him out. Um, so Steel Skull is probably the best poisoner for mid game into late game until you get some of the crazy legendary. Um, reason why he's so good is because he's got a kit which just absolutely complements fighting the clan boss. But he's actually not just good in the clan boss and I'll go over that soon. So let's just go over his skills quickly. He's got an A1 which hits two times and starts off at a very low percentage, 10%. But you can book it right up to 35% chance of laying the bigger poisons. To be honest, if you do not have this guy booked on his A1, he's nowhere near as, as threatening uh, he's probably not even as good as outlaw monk getting booked so that's a watch out you know a lot of people get him and then straight away they're thrown into their clan boss team 10 percent chance of placing a poison is really low even when you get him to what you get here you actually yeah 35 percent it still feels like it doesn't proc huge amounts so bear that in mind you know he's he's very good but by himself he's actually not enough poison to keep your clan boss down in, in terms of poison. So he's got a really good A1 once it's booked up and you know he's consistent with it really so he'll consistently hit these sort of numbers. He's got an A2 which is fantastic it, it actually works in a lot of areas of the game so he's got a big heal, um, heals them by 40% book up to 50% uh, but it also removes all debuffs off that ally so the clan boss you can get rid of the stun or things like um, spiders, you can get rid of all of those poisons off of somebody who's been hit. Uh, yeah, so get rid of things like decrease defense, decrease attack, both at the same time. Yeah, it just completely cleanses that, that person, which is fantastic, it's a really great ability. And then on top of that, he's also got an increased defense, which is one of the important things for clan boss for your team to survive for longer. Um, and at the same time, he heals the rest of the allies and all allies, himself included, for. 20% which goes up to 30 of their max HP so it's actually got an insane kit it's really good the only downside with this one is it ends up being a four turn cooldown not a three turn cooldown so when you think about clan boss if you're looking to go the same speed as the clan boss which is what we tend to do when you get to nightmare plus then this becomes you, you need somebody else doing this as well it doesn't just stay up for the whole fight it's got an aura as well but it's only for faction crypts it's a good aura for faction crypts but doesn't kind of come into play for most of the game um, so the way I build his masteries uh, and this is because I've got a vizier I build his masteries to go a normal route into war master so this is my clan boss route these two added in and this is my normal defense tree for clan boss because I've got a vizier and that's really important to say because I've got a vizier I know that his debuffs are going to continuously tick on because Vizier just it just improves uh, the chance for debuff to be ticked up every time. If I didn't have this tree on, I would go down the route of um, where I something more similar to this. So I would I would go accuracy probably into accuracy into accuracy. I would get myself down into lasting gifts, which extends any buffs so his shields and things like that would be extended um, and I would go into Master Hexer so I would extend the debuffs of the poisons that you I would probably also I wouldn't be able to do that one as well I'd probably also take this one Law of Steel and get a benefit from his items um, yeah so I'd actually probably do this so I would actually probably go through Cycle of Magic as well not these two through this way into this way through this way into this way um, and this would stay the same so the way I would gear Steel Skull if you are doing clan boss and you are trying to take on anything up to brutal I would just put him in the fastest gear you've got to just try and crank up speed so if I think about what I want with Steel Skull I want speed because I want to use his A1 as often as possible I want accuracy because I want him to lay his poisons. I then want defense because actually I need him to stay alive for as long as possible. And then I want HP. I don't care about any of the other stats. 
So the way I would always build Steel Skull, no matter what level you're playing at, so whether you're playing on hard, brutal, if you take him into nightmare, I would put defense percentage gloves on him. I've actually got HP gloves on him here. Um, I'd probably do one of each. So either defense gloves and HP chest or HP gloves and defense chest. Um, but make sure you've got some speed stats coming through it as well. I would then do speed boots. Or if I was speed tuning and wanted to do something like Nightmare Clan Boss, I would prefer to put him in defense boots, but that's harder to do. So normally speed boots, if you get to the point where you're speed tuning with him on Nightmare, then try and make defense boots stay alive a lot longer. Uh, I would then just kind of build up the gear so that I've got maximum speed and maximum accuracy defense built into the stats that I'm using. On the... The ring, I would go defense main stat and I'll try and get HP and defense. On the amulet, I would go HP or defense and I would try and get a roll on accuracy down here. I don't really need it on my build, so I've already got a lot of accuracy. That's what I'm looking for. So if I was trying to find a new one for him, I would look through my pieces and I would say, Do I have a defense one? Yes. Does it have accuracy? Yes. And I would roll that to try and get better accuracy from the piece. So that would be the one I would choose. If I was going to build a new piece for him. And then on his banner, you want to go accuracy and ideally you've got speed in there as well. So again, this one is okay. I'd prefer not to have the rolls on attack and defense and stuff. I'd rather have accuracy, speed, and then defense or HP percentages. If I look through what I've got left, this is a better banner than what he's wearing right now. I just I don't use him in my clan boss team anymore. So I'm not that fussed about the way he's geared. This is a better banner than what he's wearing right now. And that is probably a better banner than what he's wearing right now, but I'd have to get some more speed from somewhere. Okay, so I'm just going to show you now Steel Skull in a clan boss fight. That's where he's kind of most most kind of uh, prominent, I guess. Just, yeah, I think I've got. I no. And he's probably best if you manual with him because you get to use his A1 all the time until you start to need his utility. Uh, but for me, I've got a team. So I would take out Bad L from my team and put Steel Skull in. Uh, I don't have a load of life still in my team. That's why Bad L is very... Um, but... But yeah, obviously some people would have everyone in life still, including Steel Skull. In which case his healing isn't such a big deal. Uh, at the moment I've got two people in life still and the rest are not. Um, but if I show you perhaps without... I'll show, yeah, I'll show you without Vizier because he's he kind of skews things. So what I'll do is I'll throw in another... In fact I'll throw in Bad L. Then I've got two poisons that are ticking over. And I've got some sustain. Otherwise the fight will be over too soon. So what I've done here, I've still got my attack down. I've got defense down and weaken. I've got poisoner, poisoner, healer, healer. And counter attack but yeah but still skull you'll see he basically go first for me so he's the person who could cleanse bad l in this team could also cleanse but i'm going to treat it as if bad l is not there for that role i'm just going to go straight in with the poisons with bad l you see bad l definitely lands his poisons whereas still skull first effort he missed both shots um we've got the attack down champion here on comes the counter attack and on comes the boss fight so we've got a counter attack so let's just see how many hits here? So he's landed one that time. So so far he's landed one out of four shots. Didn't land again, so one out of six. You can see what I mean. Even though he's booked up, he's actually not hitting consistently. And that is what people find difficult about using him. Sometimes he'll just go on a, a kind of path of never missing. And at that stage you're just kind of like, this is a, an amazing champion. But um, yeah, sometimes he doesn't. There was other abilities you kind of would use. Normally I would just go A1s right the way through till about 5 minutes or so. Because I don't really need the rest of the healing. Um, I might throw up something like an increased defense. Not because I'm worried about taking damage. But because it makes my Razin and my Steel Skull hit a lot harder. Uh, so Jarek's got increased defense for me. So Steel Skull. You see here, so we've got the stun on. So he would go straight in. He's my fastest guy. Cleanse the stun off. And then... Basically, this guy will never miss a turn. 
and you pretty much just kind of run it through, rinse and repeat. The, the team are all speed tuned so that I always get both counter attacks up um, and, and kind of flow through nicely. I've got Razin that can remove that attack, so he's kind of well set. Pretty much Steel Skull is just there to lay those poisons at stage. Um, as I say, once you get kind of a bit further on the fight, you might start using other utility a bit more. But you can see already, we're not in a position where we've got tons of poisons up. Um, and I'm I'm used to having a vizier who, you know, just poisons, uh, just just extends debuffs for fun basically. Never have to worry about a single debuff when he's in the team. So this is just a bit more of a difficult setup, but it's more realistic. It's more realistic to what most people have got. Um, I'm just trying to increase defense on here. Again, just to make my guys hit a bit harder. You can see we've only got three debuffs up right now. Don't even have the uh, the attack debuff on. So this is actually, um, yeah, I, I I take it for granted how effective Vizier is at doing what he does. And I guess probably for anyone who's running this sort of comp, you might have a backup attack down because it's so important. Got it off there. It's good. And yeah, so look, I'm going to run this through to the end and I'll show you the sort of numbers that I get uh, with this team. So we're just coming to the end of the fight. You see how Steel Skull actually, he, it becomes so tanky. He stays alive longer than my tanks because of the way I've got him built. But we end up coming in there like 19, just under 20 million. Um, and that's with what, two legendaries, three epics. So pretty decent actually. I'd say I could easily drop out Tay Rail into this place and do a bit more damage. Uh, if we had an extender, or if I had Steel Skull in the other build, which, which would better suit him for not having an extender, then Steel Skull would be more like 15 million, probably. 12 to, 12 to 15 million, because his poisons would just stay on the whole time. So other areas where I think Steel Skull is very strong, um, we've got... He's obviously strong in Faction Wars for his faction, that's a, a kind of given. I don't really like him in Arena, I think he's just too weak and is... is um, it doesn't really bode well in Arena, there's people that does what he does better. But probably my favourite other space for him would be Spiders. Uh, he's good in Spiders, he's good at Fire Knights if you're short on people that can um, do like an A1 with a couple of hits and he, he does lay poisons and obviously he gives you heals and, and cleanses and stuff. Um, and he's good on golems as well, actually. But this is where I think he really shines. So I use him in a... Um, this is before I kind of moved to a speed farm. I used to use him a lot in a kind of clean-up setup like this. So I'd have Ignatius as my lead. Obviously, he's my main damage dealer. Uh, I would then have somebody like Steel Skull in there. Uh, Warlord was in my team. I used to use... Um, Lights... Hate that it doesn't just filter this by rank straight away. Oh yeah, light sworn. Gear on him. The light sworn used to be the one that would tank up the damage for me actually, and then I used to have somebody like a old heart. Yeah, so the idea here is that Steel Skull basically is. I, I play this on auto. Obviously, we want to be able to do it on auto. Steel Skull has given me increased defense. I've got a couple of people that are hitting with defense, so it basically gives me more damage. And he's also there to start to cleanse off poisons once they start to kick in. So, um, also, his poison damage here does not do, it, it does damage. You know, it does a reasonable amount when you've got those poisons ticking over. You see here now, he's taking up the poisons. Um, we've got a decent amount of turn meter going, uh, turn meter reduction with this team. Got the burns, which are kind of doing a crazy amount of damage as well. I get, I'm, I've got two legends in here. I get it. You know, not everyone's going to have these guys, um, but I just wanted to show you how I used to use Steel Skull before I went into like a proper speed farm setup. I've, I think I've put videos out there as again before, and, and maybe I'll do one in a second where you've got perhaps a, a weaker team than this. But I just want to show you how useful he is at this sort of stage of a dungeon. I mean, often when people ask me about doing a takeover or just ask for some support and I look at their comp, the first thing I'm looking for is, you know, for a spider, there he goes, just cleanse the poisons. For the spider, have they got a steel skull that can come in and just kind of add a bit of support to those people that are taking up a lot of damage? Probably going to lose cold heart here. Yeah. That's fine. We're already quite a chunk through. Obviously, he's about to suck up all the spiders in a second. 
but we're over halfway down. Uh, we're about to get our AoE burns back shortly, which will be the kind of finish to the nuking. And at that stage, it's uh, pretty much good night, spider really. Now it's just about surviving. So that spider burns down. See, additional poisons ticking over. All good. Gonna chunk up some damage here. He's actually got good resistance, so he doesn't take too many poisons. Quite nice. Um, and because he's got high defense as well, the hits aren't actually hitting for that much. The steel skull does enough just to kind of keep him down. Fortunately, the uh, turn meter redu reduction didn't land. You see here, we're just kind of chunking him down. And this is probably one of the strongest sort of setups you can have is the Ignatius burn. You know, aside from just absolutely nuking with raw guards and stuff, the Ignatius HP burn or someone else who does something similar along with other people that just kind of tank up the damage. I'm hoping we clear it before the next full um, before the next full turn meter gain. That'll mean we we'll clear it in about three minutes. Um, but obviously, you know, if you if I had Warmaster on Ignatius and Warlord, then we'd be doing it a lot quicker as well. He's probably going to drop as well. Nope, got to clutch heal and, and clean up debuffs. Going to die anyway. Maybe. I could have done with that burn not killing everyone. I actually kind of want the burns to just stay on. Probably dead now. Yeah. Two down. Come on boys, don't let me down. Get those poisons up. So yeah, ideally with the, the AoE burn you basically want for as many spiders to live through it as possible. So to clear a wave like that is, is the worst case you can get. But you know, let's do it an auto, isn't it? You kind of, I'm not choosing when he's going to do these things. It's, it's actually just being done. Uh, you know, an auto, you kind of just have to rely on RNG. Pretty close. It's going to be about maybe four and a half minutes. But you see again there that that kind of removed the poisons. Poisons just do so much damage. So being able to remove them like that is is really clutch. Question is, are we going to get the AoE HP burn when we need it? Obviously, Warlord's got this immunity to buff, uh, debuffs as well, which is fantastic. There's the burn. At last, there he goes. So, it just gives you an idea of, of where I use him. Um, up until recently, I did use him in Ice Golems a lot as well. So, in Ice Golems, just for sustain, really, you know, Ice Golems is a tough battle. Um, so let's just swap out him. That's all. Let's change that up. So that it's so easy. And again, yeah, I used to use a lot of this guy. Um, similar sort of cast. Basically, the steel skull is there just to kind of give you that sustain constantly. Um, so, uh, yeah, so steel skull is it's kind of just giving you the sustain through the waves. Um, you know, making sure that your team are able to clear it without you losing a load of a load of champs. Obviously, you know, we've got a team here of, of people that can all do a bit of damage, but they're not damage dealers. One, two, three defensive people who supports basically but that generally on ice golem works better than if you had a whole team of offensive that can fall down easy so this is definitely and, and, and what i look at is yes i can do faster runs but are they a high level of success you know you don't want to waste energy doing runs where eventually you're going to lose that that work that you're putting in and lose the energy that you're putting in for for items you want to have as you know as fast a run as possible, but with a, as high a success rate as possible. So, you know, clear the first wave 49 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to play it right through because it's probably quite dull, but you get the idea. This is just a, a very safe way of doing it. Umbral is clutch here, by the way. Look at all those block debuffs that have gone on. Oh, block buffs even, sorry. So, all of these shrieks, which normally really hurt, don't go on. Really good. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Still Skull is here purely as the support and yeah, we'll definitely do that that level. So look, I think that's probably it for the guide. Hopefully you found that useful. I think he is one of the best epics in the game. 
and definitely one that you want to try and search for. If you get him, he's worth books. Without books, he's subpar, I would say. So definitely one worth booking up. I've been Hell Hades. Thanks for watching.